Once you've gotten the rest of your little nitpicky adjustments done, you have essentially a finished graphic if this is where you want to stop. Right now all the colors are really flat and that is a style, so if that's the style you're rolling with you can stop there. But if you're wanting to add a little more visual interest, which I would recommend, taking it a step further and putting some texture in there can be a little like the icing on the cake. The trick is to get the right balance so that it doesn't overwhelm your information or your graphics. When I go texture searching, I usually come up with a couple, two or three, uh, that have some really different qualities or scale about them. So here we've got a real close up of some waffle cones, but the image is mostly one color. Then a something that's a little bit less, maybe a little less busy with the ice cream texture and then the one that will be my real money maker is the small quiet texture. You really have to have one of these if you're going to add texture to your project. I like looking for brown paper textures online that usually comes up with some great results. When you copy your files over to um, when you copy your textures over to your file, I would recommend dropping it at the very top. So I'm going to grab my brown paper and select all, copy, and come back to my file and paste. And this will put this at the top of my layers. But here's the thing. When we begin applying blend modes, you're going to notice that the yellowness of that paper gives a real cast to the graphics, which is okay, that's alright, but you just need to be deliberate about it because it could change all of your graphics. Now obviously this is way too much texture, so you could scale the opacity way back, and again this gives it kind of a dingy cast, so I'm actually going to show you what I like to do better than using just a yellow version or a color version. When I, before I copy my texture over even, I'll desaturate it so that it's black and white. Now, you can do this a couple ways. You can go to the image and change the mode to grayscale, or you can have a little more control over it by going to image, adjustments, and then hue, saturation, and just pulling that saturation bar over to the left as far as you want. Now I'm pull mine over so it's completely gray, but if you did want to leave a little bit of a color cast, somewhere here in the left-ish area would work well. So now I have my gray texture. If I zoom back a little and hit Command T, you'll notice this is really, really big. So to keep that texture small in proportion with my graphics, I'm going to size it down a little bit, but place it so I'm not seeing any of the rips or tears. This would probably be a good spot to grab any of your healing tools that you want to use to uh, get rid of particularly dark spots and tears. This quiet texture is not where you want to have a lot of character, things like tears, cracks, scratches. It's supposed to be pretty toned down. My next step is to use the blend modes and find something that looks like it could work pretty well. The blend modes are here at the top of the at the top of the layers and we can flip through them quickly by grabbing your move tool, holding shift and then using the plus and minus keys. So again like when it was yellow, you'll see a lot of different results. But, with it being gray, you're much more likely to stumble upon one that doesn't change the colors of your graphics too much. So this one is Overlay, which actually works pretty well. It's still a little bit on the really light side, so I'm going to just remember this and finish flipping through for just another minute. Alright, well in my opinion, that's about as good as it gets. However, it did kind of wash out some of our graphics, so I can come back in and change the opacity just a little bit so that it's showing up. You probably can't even see it on your screen. Um, it just gives a little bit of texture. 
Next thing is to make sure that you have texture only on the objects that you want to have texture. Right now it's over everything, but I think I would actually like it to just be over the background. To do that I need to get a little bit organized. You can see I have tons of layers. I'm going to show you a really cool organization trick in CS6 and I think the later versions. At the top of your layers palette you have this option drop down that says kind and next to it a few graphics. If I want to collect all of the kind of whatever I'm looking for I can see only the pixel layers by just clicking on that and disabling it will return everything. Only things with adjustment layers or text I can actually do a couple at a time but since I want to collect just my text layers I can click that and those are the only ones showing. Now the only drawback to this whole situation is when you have this option turned on these are the only layers you can affect. You can't even use any selection tricks to get anything else out here. So if you're at that frustrated point of wondering why you can't grab something, check over here. It might just be that that's the case. So now I've got all of my text layers selected. I can uncheck that and they still say selected. And then I can drag them down to a group folder or hit command G. So there's a new group. I'll just pop that up to the very top and name it copy. And then I'm just going to run through and get rid of things that don't need to be there. I usually at some point look for empty layers because in my creation process I usually have an empty layer. You can change this drop down from kind to attribute which is my all-time favorite and then come over here and tell it what you're actually looking for. So I'm looking for any empty layers and <laughs> as a surprise I actually don't have any. When you're done switching through the different options just go back to kind and make sure that nothing's clicked and you can continue on your merry way without losing any of your stuff. So I'm just going to do a quick visual run and see what layers are not being used and get rid of them if I don't need them. Same with folders. And then grab everything that is background material and put it in a folder, which should leave everything else as graphics. And I'll put that in a folder. And whatever thing I want to have that texture be over. I'll make sure those layers are beneath that texture. Once you've done the texture bit you may find that there's some contrast issues. The one that's jumping out at me most is this pink being really really bland. So just one of the tricks I sometimes will use is to select that area grab a gradient tool and pick just a slightly darker color and use my gradient solid to transparent and do something like add a linear gradient just a little bit on the sides. There we go, my reverse was on. Just to give it a little bit of depth and I might even do that to a couple of these other spots. So this time I'm going to grab a black, use some opacity, Maybe just come in a little bit out the corners. Oh, that helped a lot make that a bit more readable. I'm going to use some other textures as well. I found the ice cream one specifically, so I could use it behind the chocolate title word. So I'm going to grab that background rectangle and use it to make a selection and paste in place that image. Now if you wonder how to do that you can come up to edit and there should be a paste special paste in place and it will, well that didn't do it. Maybe I lied to you. I've used the hotkey for so long. Let's do paste into. That's what I was going for. And it will create a layer mask for just that area. Now obviously I don't want to have strawberry behind my chocolate so I need to change the color to be more brown. 
you do that under image adjustments and hue. Browns are a little bit tricky, but you do need to desaturate it, make it darker. Well, actually, probably saturate it, and then come over into the yellows and oranges and just kind of fiddle around until you can see it becoming brown. And I'll come in and adjust this a little bit more. Right now, this is huge, so I need to size it down to where I can kind of see what's going on. And then I'm going to apply a blend mode too. So really you just use all the tricks you know to try and get your texture to be roughly the right color so that it plays well with the rest of your graphics. So there it is. It's a subtle texture behind there. It doesn't take away from everything, but it makes this pop out quite a bit more. Then I was going to do the same thing with the waffle cone behind the vanilla side of things. The command for pasting into is command option shift V and in this case I actually want it to be really 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 faint so I'm flipping through my blend modes until I find one that I can lower the opacity on and still have it show up just a little bit. Alright, there's texture. The last thing would be effects. So my ice cream cone here already has a little bit of a drop shadow and that's really all the effect I want to add to anything. Now I'm using my quick grab command by using my move tool, holding down command and clicking on something, but you'll notice I'm only getting my texture layer over here. That's just because that's the on top of everything else that I'm looking at and to fix that I can lock that layer and it will make it invisible to my quick grab command. Now the visual style I'm kind of running with is a softer one so I don't want there to be really really hard drop shadows. And again I'm keeping in mind that I should do things in multiples of at least three and keeping it in odd so we got one two three four five right now which is pretty good and I think that's about how far I took it so there's a little bit of difference between my trial run and this one but not a whole bunch the last thing you want to do graphic wise, and this has probably been bugging some of you the entire time since I've typed the letter, have you noticed that sandwich is spelled wrong? This is a really easy error and I'm even guilty of it. It's I spelled a couple things wrong that have been printed on official public documents. It's really embarrassing. So before you run away from your project, grab your type tool right click and choose check spelling and it will run through all of your visible layers and offer suggest, uh, suggestions for spelling. And there we go. Now that changed the size of that word quite a bit so I'm going to adjust that so that it fills the space and we're good to go when you are complete save whatever file type that you need for the purpose if this is for the internet you would save probably a JPEG because that's about the most common thing on the internet and I'm just gonna leave these at standard because I don't do JPEGs for internet very often but I can supply you some information and the links to find out what uh, what the settings are for best fastest viewing options. I hope that was really helpful and hope that these steps will help you out in the future in making really awesome layouts and graphics.